Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy, Papatello. Back to you with another World of Warcraft video. And I told you I'm back on my daily uploads. Don't worry, I ain't slacking. You people in the comments telling me I'm slacking. You're pissing me off right now. I'll kiss you. Back it up. I don't want to make out with you and get bricked up. Look how giant this water bottle is. It's almost bigger than my entire body. Maybe not that big, because I'm a big motherfucker. Settle down, you're pissing me off right now. However, much love to you, amigos. It's a beautiful day. Uh, I had to go outside, you know, today, touch grass, as usual. Um, but we also had to go um, drop Mama Tell off uh, at, at urgent care today. She cut her finger with a potato peeler. So, she's alright, don't worry. We had to bring her to the hospital after that, just to, you know, make sure she gets it checked up. You know, taking care of her, but... Much love to Mama Tello in the comments below. I'm sure she would love to see that because she loves all you guys as well. Um, she's a great woman. We love her. However, the other day I also did a, a podcast with uh, Jake from Tree and Sam and Dina. I'm sure the editor, you better put it in somewhere down there. You're pissing me off, guy. However, he's doing all right. We have him tied to the chair for the next seven days. No big deal. Um, yeah, we'll leave it in the comments below or they'll, they'll, uh, well, the links in the description. You know what I'm saying. Or there'll be a screenshot on the screen. We'll figure that out. You're pissing me off. I'm about to hawk a Louis. <laughs> Settle down. Not that type of video. Oh, I feel like Triple H. I'm about to spit it out. No, let me back up. That almost caught me right there. You're setting me up. Where's their horde? We'll never know. However, get into the fucking video right now, good man. Anywho, so it seems like Wildhead has a lot of tabs up going on right now with um, a lot of updates they're making to the website. Obviously, you know, in prep for Phase 3, you know, they need some time to get all the data organized so they can, you know, show, like, you know, the BIS list, show all the loot within one category, you know, a nice section to get it all here. And I love Wowhead, so Wowhead's always been a great source of information. So, Sunken Temple loot sources from Wowhead. This uh, link I'm going to put in the description below is going to show you all the weapons and uh, one hands, made hands, two hands, range, shields, and off hands that you can get per boss so you can just monitor which one you want to put that on whether you put that on a spreadsheet or your discord or you just have this bookmarked that's totally fine i'm going to put that in the description below for you guys also new shoulder and chance for sod phase three which we already know about this um but they're purchased with the craftable uh, alchemy material that you can get from zoggle the explorer which is um right over here i believe um you can actually see him right here in stranglethorn vale over here to the west um but overall you can get these um enchantments uh, directly tied to alchemist the flask of nightmare mojo is obviously a new craftable flask in phase three uh, with the currency that can be used with zoggle the explorer and then you can attain these uh, enchantments for the shoulder pieces and then you can also um is the the nightmare mojo flask himself they're crafted with nightmare seeds so if you're checking on your auction house right now they're probably fluctuating in price i would believe like in the beginning like when i put them up there they were going for like 10 20 gold then they went to like 40 gold now they're coming down a lot in gold because people are realizing in sunken temple you could farm these mobs and these drop relatively quickly so that's pretty good and um i'm actually happy with the fact that people can farm these seeds so they can just get their epics get their enchantments would do whatever they have to do so this is really good stuff and for alchemists right now and enchanters you guys are going to be eaten for the rest of the, the rest of the game especially when it comes to you know the mongooses and all the other flasks that you get to create you guys are making bank right now uh so more, more power to you to the boys and girls of the alchemists and enchanters dark moon fair now, DMF is live, and DMF is now becoming a bigger deal because we have the new cards, you know, that you can get if you guys have been running uh, Maradon or if you've been doing, you know, ZF or any other things in the world. Uh, you've been noticing these cards have been dropping, which lead to a trinket. Now, uh, right now, currently, if you check, like, a lot of the logs, there's certain trinkets being used more than others basically sandstorm because it is actually kind of fucking broken they nerfed it then they hit it again and i'm still curious if people are still going to be using this when i check more of the logs as we go through it not today um, i have to do some more research as we go through the next couple of weeks because uh, i see some paladins are actually using this card but it costs a fortune um i think to complete a deck it's up to 1200 gold and i think the most expensive one and if you guys let me know on your server i think the most expensive one is the uh I think it's the Ace of Apes or the, the the number eight card in the deck, and it was going for like 400, 500 gold, at least on Living Flame. So where I'm, you know, Iverside at. But this one is still pretty good. I think they hit it with another nerf, which we'll probably read through in a sec. Um, but yeah, one of the the better cards in the game. They still have Overgrowth. Obviously, it's another deck you can make. Uh, the chance to uh, restore eight energy, one mana, or four rage. Um, the other one with spells and tech sometimes leech health from the target, which is Decay. Which um, some warlocks were saying it's not too bad but it's not too great it's not as good as they thought so 
seems all right at best and then there's torment gives the wearer a chance uh, on attack to, and spell cast to torment their target causing them to wander in suffering for three seconds so it seems pretty interesting um i do believe uh the nightmare deck uh it was found as well uh, and there should be a link up here if not it's fine um it, it just got discovered i think as of recently but overall it's cool that these decks provide like these little bonus effects um and it, it is nice but i do think right now the overall top one is sandstorm still even after the nerf so we'll see what happens if we go through the data and go from there we're doing this all raw guys i just opened up the tabs and i want to talk with you and be a regular human being not a fucking robot don't piss me off it's all right keep that in they need to know they need to know however so Season Discovery Hotfixes, April 8th, uh, April 8th, which is yesterday, and obviously today is the 9th. Wake up, Tello! However, Avatar of a Car, HP Nerf, and Loganar Fix. So, Blizzard published many hotfixes of Season Discovery, including Loganar, who was needed for Epic Craft and Questline, a new visual for Void Zone, and tweaks to Veilfire Bolt. In addition, uh, Aranicus nerfs from earlier today, Blizzard announced that the Avatar of Hakar's HP was reduced by 35%, which we're going to go over the Aranicus nerfs right after. I think it's right here, actually. I see it. So, let's look at the patch notes. So, Saad updated the levels of Fire Guard Destroyers in BRD to be more appropriate for Phase 3 of Season of Discovery. Now, if I think that what I think that is, I think I'm about to get really fucking pissed off here in a second. They're pissing me off. Editor, you better zoom in because I'm real mad right now. However, um, you sons of bitches. Why don't you just say what you really updated it for? Say the truth. Because you know your boy was struggling in there and I was dying left and right for a fucking rune. Just say the fact that we updated the levels because paladins were getting dogged. Raw doggy style, no condom, extra lube. Settle down, it's, it's a video game. In Minecraft, family friendly YouTube, we love the channel. <laughs> You're pissing me off. Anywho, fixed an issue that caused Druid Trainer Loganar to vanish uh, periodically, okay. Uh, and I do believe that was like in Moonglade, a lot of people were having issues with that, Horde was camping in, and like it was a, it was being camped, it was ridiculous. Uh, Non-engineer, non-blacksmith, uh, nightmare, arm, arm, I can't pronounce this. Arminance, I believe. Our recipes no longer require a blacksmith uh, hammer to craft. Oh, interesting. All right. And materials required for the quest, uh, mixology for fun and profit, have been adjusted. Now, items. I think this is where we were talking about the sandstorm thing from before um, when we were just talk uh, talking about the Dark Moon cards. So, Dark Moon card sandstorm no longer triggers on every instant cast spell. I assume it was triggering on every uh, instant cast spell, which is kind of fucking nuts. Therefore, it made it broken. Therefore, it was uh, d duplicating, if anything, people's damage more in higher numbers than what they realistically should have been. So it's good that they're hitting this with a nerf, and that's really good. This way, also, it doesn't need to be fucking 1,200 gold. I don't think nobody's spending 1,200 gold on some bullshit. Even if it's a damage increase, listen, if you're swiping, more power to you. Send your boy Tello a couple thousand, and we'll talk about it. However, uh, Flash specifically for Sunken Temple now persists through death. I think that's a very smart decision. Um, I don't think anything else, rather like consumables or even world buffs should persist, but the Flash that you get from these dungeons, which are actually really fucking good, those craftable Flasks, some of them are better than a world buff itself. Um, this is really fucking good, and I like that, so that's kind of cool. Tenacity change was now male, was leather, I heard about that change. Um, Membrane of the Dark Neurosis now has spell hit, was spirit, and now has spell power proc would, uh, was haste. So it, it took away the haste and added a spell power proc to the overall kit of this specific item. And then Breath of the Beast is now unique. Now I know there was a big drama with this. Um, I didn't like the fact that people got two trinkets, spend their wild offerings, and then there was no compensation for them. I do believe there was a blue post about it, um, of them talking about, like, well, are we going to get any compensation back or anything? And they, they said, we unfortunately can't give anybody back their wild offerings if you spent them already. So you basically wasted people's time and hours for putting in, you know, the, the, the time into the game to not get any recompensation back. I think that's just a little... A little BS on my end. I'm not too sure how I feel about that, Blizzard. I'm not going to lie. I don't agree with you guys on that one. That's just my opinion. Um, but at, at the end of the day, you know, I guess it is what it is. We just got to move on, right? As always, when it comes to Blizzard bullshit drama, we have to move on and just keep playing the game and enjoy what we got, right? So it sucks. I know, chat. I agree with you guys in the comments, but it is what it is. So, Druids, the free Wrath cast from Fury Storm Age will no longer be uh, consumed clear casting. Rumsey Rum no longer 100% procs Omen and Clarity, which I was talking with my friend about this, and this sounded fucking nuts that an item was procking Omen of Clarity for Druids, which 
didn't know that i guess this was a, a druid discord thing because i'm not in the druid discords but my druids let me know in the comments below what your thoughts about it this is and whether you like this or not or you thought it was just stupid very interesting mages a lot of changes to bale fireball overall it procs and consumes clear casting now correctly benefits from spell power rune which i guess it originally didn't um displacement no longer requires a target balefire abort now walks with ignite uh conjure water rank six. this is a really good just quality of life i like this stuff rank six now conjures 20 waters it's really good molten core now falls off when the rune is swapped out balefire bolt now benefits in uh from and consumes our uh, arcane blast stacks and also spends the charges of combustion so that's pretty good overall uh, priest, Void Zone damage no longer resets the casting time on your wand. Void Zone now locks the Priest out of Shadow School when kicked. And Void Zone visually changed to be less disruptive. Yeah, this is a big one right here. Because I liked it. Like, it kind of looked cool at first. But then, when they keep putting it on the ground, especially at Altar and STV or in Raid or whatever they're doing, um, it's like... It's a little concerning for some people that don't know what the fuck is going on. Should I be standing or not? Obviously, it's a Priest ability. But it's a very, like... It's in your face. Like, it's there. So, I think um, the fact that they changed the visual a little bit, it, keep it looking, you know, kind of sick, but don't make it where it's, like, not super good looking on the eyes, which, you know, obviously, we got to, you know, make the game look good, of, of course. Um, Rogue, fixed a bug where Honor Thieves were... <clears throat> oh, yeah, Rogues were... Um, my friend actually was telling me about this. Uh, shout out to one of the guildmates. Um, fixed a bug where Honor Among Thieves where it could stop working if you try to get, uh, try it again. Or try to gain, sorry, a combo point on an ally, or you had uh, your target die from a critical ability. Jeez, I don't know why I can't speak right now. Honor Monk Thieves should no longer consider whether the rogue or their allies are flagged for PvP, and Carnage will no longer fall off while rank 4 rupture is active. I got people calling me right now. Unbelievable. They're trying to set me up. However, um... This is really cool. Uh, I do think rogues are doing a freak ton of damage right now. If you if you check the the logs, rogues are popping off right now, and rogues are looking really really juicy, consistently getting back their combo points and just going ham. So honestly, more power to the rogues and much love to them amigos because they were getting shit all last phase, and I'm happy they're doing a good job here. So more power to you, my my rogue friends. A very rare W for you, I must say. However, Shamans, Tidal Waves will not always apply. It's increased in Healing Wave K uh, K-Spell, even if the Healing Wave was spell queued. Before we continue the video, let me mute the phone just in case so nobody gets pissed off in the comments saying, Mute your phone! I'll kiss you. However, Warrior. Shield Slam now correctly uh, has 200% increased threat. That's kind of fucking nuts. And Devastate correctly deals the 150% weapon damage per uh, second was 100. So, making more of the prop warriors come into the scene. I know the regular warriors still want to, you know, shine overall, but guys, if you look at the numbers, you guys are fucking popping off right now in Sunken Temple. So, yeah, don't worry. You're going to get a lot more love, especially come next phase when more runes come out. You guys are already fucking going crazy in damage. The gear is going to scale with warriors to a level, obviously, we've seen in the past. But with these runes, the way things are going, if more new runes come out to benefit warrior damage, you guys are going to skyrocket. So don't worry, warriors. You guys are being taken care of. It's going to happen. And it's already kind of happened if you see the numbers. Um, Warlock. Felgar will now cast Cleave. When there is only one target, okay? And Demonic Sacrifice buff now falls off when the Summoned Felgar rune is removed. And now things with Sunken Temple itself. Fix an issue where Festering Rot, uh, rot Slime would despawn and then soft lock the raid in combat. Avatar Akar and Hakari Bloodkeeper health lowered by 35%. Aranicus, players should no longer be able to walk on the raised edges of the room. Number of wealth spawned in second phase reduced from 6 was 8. Number of Nightmare Scalebane spawned during third phase was 2 was 3. And period of the summon effect of the last phase increased to 9 seconds was 6. Number of whelps and scale beads spawned during the last phase dropped to 3 and 1 was 4 and 2. And then for Nightmare Incursions. Uh, retuned the Unstable Wiss and Hinterland and Nightmare Incursions to be a, uh, a bit less punishing for players to deal with. Yeah, and, and this is what I was saying in my video the other day. Um, the Hinterland's uh, Nightmare Incursions, when you go in there, it's actually genuinely hard is what I was trying to say. Like, if you have a good 5-man, you can do it. But these Wiss fucking blast you for damage. If you don't just CC them real quick, you get nuked. And it's really, uh, it was really fucking tough going around that area. Um, and that's the one I went to. I didn't, ever, I didn't go to the uh, Feralist one, um, but the Hinterland's one, it was kind of nuts. Quest object, uh, objects for Nightmare Incursions now have multiple simultaneous spawning locations. Reduce the experience awarded by Nightmare Incursion quests and increase the reputation uh, granted by level 50 quests. Now, I'm not too sure how I feel about this part, about reducing the experience awarded by the Nightmare Incursion quests. I, I think 
I, I like it, but at the same time, because, like, I, I want the world people questing in the world as well, you know? You know, going to different areas, questing, obviously, you know, doing, you know, specific quests that are important to them. Um, but at the same time, like, I, I think it's... The Nightmare Incursions have been a big hit and a big miss. At the same time, like, there was a big fuck-up, obviously, with the first couple hours of the game, and people got too much gold. Um, and obviously, the auction houses right now are kind of fucked and wild when it comes to the economy. Uh, even though Agron said the economy will kind of, you know, fix itself uh, as we go. Um, but overall, I don't know if, if you keep nerfing the experience in Nightmare Incursions is the answer. I think people are still going to do them. Um, and also, like, people are going to still want to have to get rep for them, and you're going to be grinding for a while to get that rep. Um, I, be I do believe the daily quest is still like a thousand rep overall. I can be wrong about that, but correct me in the comments below. Anybody doing the Nightmare Incursions? Because I got to go back to them. I've been farming so much shit in different areas of the world. But overall, um, I, I like it and I don't like it. I'm a little bit half and half on this one. So let me know your comments below what you guys think about Nightmare Incursions. Um, as far as this goes, this can go fuck itself for sure. 100% for sure. Now, Shade of Veronica's health and ability nerfs uh, in obviously Sunken Temple. So... With Sunken Temple, uh, obviously being the hardest raid since saw uh, release, um, Blizzard early has said that they were prepared to nerf it. While we already saw a significant nerf to boss health across the board just a few days ago, uh, the Shade of Veronicus was still putting up a fight with most groups. Until now, it has been reported the update went live. Players were still at the instance, bringing the boss health down to 1.4, uh, 1.45 uh, million. Oh my gosh. The boss went live around 4 million health, which goes to show you how large the nerf really is. And, I, and this is what I'm just going to say right now. Okay, before we even continue, I don't know what Blizzard dev at at the company is actually playing the game. Now I understand, you know, your devs, you know, you got you guys got the you guys got the easy cheats. You got you got you make the game. You know, you're doing the thing, right? You got all the tools. However, um, what in your right mind thought four million health was the fucking thing to do? 4 million health. Now, I'm in a firm believer, and I said this on uh, the podcast when I was with Jake and Sam and Dina the other day. Um, I am a firm believer that Blizzard knows what they're doing. They do this stuff on purpose to create this news. Therefore, people like us create videos. Therefore, you guys watch. Therefore, things go on Twitter, you know, and things get trending or stuff like, you know what I mean? Like, these things happen to create, you know, this type of, you know, wavelength of relevancy, right? And 4 million health for this boss was absolutely a fucking joke let alone a lot of stuff in the raid was a, a, a joke itself because at the end of the day i'm gonna agree with what's right and i'm gonna say what's wrong and i'm gonna tell you right now and i'm gonna zoom in on this one this was wrong flat out this was fucking wrong and also let's not get to the point where we're gonna start treating these raids where they're like retail based stuff because i'm starting to see the cracks and i'm not blind don't get me wrong guys i'm with you like i at the end of the day i'm always gonna side with the community and rock with the player base you know because we're the ones that are playing the game and actually testing the game on a daily basis breaking the game trying to you know find different ways to you know even even though exploits are bad it's good to find these because we can find these and blizzard could take care of you know what i mean the devs can get on this shit but this is not what the the raid should be like especially for the pug scene you know who are not in a guild this is fucking insane so i'm happy these nerfs are happening and fuck it nerf it to the ground so people can play the fucking rain and enjoy the game classic is not supposed to be even though this is not classic it's seasonal discovery but at the end of the day this version of wow is not supposed to be retail it's not supposed to be mythic plus it's supposed to be something people go in there play the game have a good time and they can feel comfortable of going into the raids but at the moment it's kind of really shaky what Blizzard is doing with Sunken Temple. Now, I like the nerfs. I think uh, I, when I was at Booty Bay yesterday, multiple drops of world buffs were coming down. It was Zandalari buffs. It was a little weird that it was named that. But it's it's basically the, the the new version of their buff that they're doing in Sod. And it drops down. So multiple people were clearing it. 100%. We did 6 out of 8. We couldn't finish on Sunday because we have people, obviously, at work, you know, a life the next day. But we're, this weekend, we're going in there and try to 8 out of 8 that bitch. So it's going to be good. Also... More nerfs to the boss itself. Acid shot cast time uh, increased to 2.5 was 2 seconds. So, not too sure if that's really a super nerf. Uh, Belowing roar cast time increased to 2.5 was 2. Corrosive damage was... Okay, this is the big one. Corrosive breath damage reduced by 40%, but debuff uh, now lasts 20 seconds was 12. Uh, corrosive uh, breath now goes through the line of sight, so you can't avoid it. 
Deep Slumber cast time increased from 2.5 to 2 seconds. Lethargic Poison damage reduced by 50%, which is pretty massive, but debuff now lasts 15 seconds, was 30. Thrash is no longer used. Tail Sweep damage reduced by 33%. And uh, there is also one more document chain that we don't know what it's tied to. Expect that it interacts with the new profession uh, regions of the Inner Mantle of the Nightmares and the Shard of the Void. Um, and it uh, seems like it's our parameter change. However, I'm really happy with this change because 4 million health, this is like twice, almost three times the size of, you know, Ragnaros. Uh, this is insane that they even thought 4 million health was a, was a right thing. That is, that's just smoking. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it right now. That's smoking dick. Respectfully, settle down, lock it in. However... Uh, Discover Delight Experience Increase and Nightmare Incursion Adjustments are now live. Um, yes, and now this goes over this blue post. We're going to speak about it and we're going to talk about it because I want to dig di dig deeper into this a little bit more um, so we can talk about this and see their point of view overall. So, afternoon player players heavily prefer to level Nightmare Incursion instead of exploring Azeroth or running dungeons and attempt to promote these other methods that have been made. The experience from Incursion has been significantly nerfed from roughly 7k XP all the way down to 3k according to a recent Reddit post. Despite uh, the hopes of buffing Discover's Delight from 50 to 75 would make the two methods roughly on par, this change doesn't uh, does seem to have hit incursions particularly hard, potentially dethroning them as the fastest leveling option. Players looking to dungeon level should now remember to pick up the Wild Gods, obviously for the Wild Offerings, um, but the new changes look to mainly roughly 60% less experience from incursions, while increasing the experience from 40 to 50 from other methods by 16% overall, so it gives a, a less incentive to do incursions in general so let's read the blue post we'll give our, our 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 points of view and go from there blizzard greetings we have been uh having a blast watching everyone join themselves in nightmare incursions over the past few uh, past few days but we want to give you a little bit of advanced notice from changing but we we plan to make early next week and give you a bit of explanation of our reasoning and how we decide on this adjustment. We've always intended Nightmare Incursion to be a very valuable source of uh, experience, uh, but one thing we didn't intend was that it would be so much better than most other forms of XP gain between level 40 and 50. We have been concerned that the Nightmare Incursions may overshadow most of our activities in the game in their current form, and while we're all having a lot of fun, we hate folks to feel like they need to entirely uh, eschew or basically move move from the level 40 to 50 content for the rest of the fucking phase is what they're getting at as a result when we make adjustments on money and increase the magnitude of the discovered delight xp we're still working through percentage we'll adjust but likely we're going to increase the level to 40 to 49 uh, buff from 50 percent ex uh, experience to 75 like they mentioned to offset this we'll be reducing the amount of xp you gain from the nightmare incursions one thing to know is that we'll reduce the XP from Nightmare Incursion missions. The creatures within Nightmare themselves are still impacted by Discover's Delight. So they'll be more lucrative as well within the adjustments, and they already have a higher than normal uh, multiplier on their XP gain. This will serve to make kill quests within the Dream more lucrative compared to the other types of collection or interaction quests, which feel also helps correct an imbalance there as well. Ultimately, we love the Nightmare Incursions and think they're a flavorful, fun addition to Sod, but we totally recognize they run the risk of too much of a good thing and becoming stale players, particularly leveling multiple characters as they're currently such a strong source of XP. We felt that this is the best compromise to keep encouragements rewarding while also encouraging participating in questing and dungeons without feeling like you are leveling so much efficiently on the table. We want to let you know this ahead of time, however, so if you're enjoying uh, Nightmare Incursions as it is, you can continue as you have been throughout the rest of the weekend before we offset the new uh, those XP gains to the other activities. Well, um, we again thank you for participating in SOD. Overall, we go into uh, each phase ambitious with plans, but sometimes aspects of the game have some rough edges that would require us to make adjustments on the fly to correct outliers like this. As always, we appreciate your patience as we write the story of SOD together with you. We can't wait for more of you to get into Sunken Temple this weekend and are eager to share more information with our plans for Phase 4 as we get closer to the release. Thank you from the WoW dev team. Now, I do appreciate their ambitions, uh, you know, each phase trying to release something new, whether it lands or not. You know, if the shit sticks, it's great, but if it doesn't, it's obviously trash. Um, but overall, I, I do think that, you know, at the end of the day, you have to find a middle ground of making Nightmare Incursions just as good as dungeon leveling. There shouldn't be a thing where, like, okay, dungeons are better, Nightmare Incursions are better. No, it should be an optional thing. Nightmare Incursions are going to get you a really good XP, and also dungeon grinding is going to give you really good XP. And you could do either or, where they're both extremely efficient, and this doesn't create a sense of imbalance between which one where you should go, and the scales are lean to one side in favor to the other. So that's something that Blizzard has to do with their balancing, and once again, has been the biggest challenge for Blizzard, 
is the word balance because they can't balance shit sometimes uh, properly. Uh, not even sometimes, most of the times, even to this day with a lot of things in general. It's a topic for another you know time. However, um, I do respect that they are answering the player base and giving us feedback and talking about it, but definitely needs to be still looked more into because at the end of the day, if people want to just do nightmare incursions, they should have that option. If people just want to do dungeons, they should have that option. And the XP from both ends should be relatively good and uh, not cater to one side or the other. That's just my opinion. So, account restrictions for new players on SOD. This is something that kind of intrigued me where I was like, whoa, what is, what is this about? So, Blizzard introduced new account restrictions on SOD for accounts, which the first paid month has not yet fully passed. If you added the game time for the first time to your account you will not be able to trade with players or use the auction house and in-game mail and sod until the first 30 days have passed so it's a restriction on new accounts being made within season discovery it's also affecting players on classic era servers as well so um blizzard is investigating and working a fix on this um it was only intended for sod but it's affecting classic era so they're not trying to touch classic era it seems like they're trying to fix that so this is mainly for sod so let's read the blue post and go from there Hey all, sorry for the confusion. We're currently have a restriction on new accounts for playing SOD similar to purchase of WoW tokens. This means that if your first time adding a game to your WoW account, if the game time was added recently, you'll not be able to trade other players using the auction house or in-game mail. Once the 30-day period, uh, period ended, the restrictions will be lifted automatically. If you're still seeing restrictions after that, however, you will need to log on out of your account uh, for at least 12 hours. So you have to wait even more time. Um, and then they made an edit. Thank you for the players who reported seeing the restrictions after the following above instructions. This has been forwarded to the developers. Um, just to be clear, this is for season discovery only, uh, and they'll follow up with a fix as soon as possible. Now, the biggest thing about this, which is like a little curious to me, is I wonder if they're doing this because they're of you know the bots. You know, I wonder if they're seeing a rise of bots on season of discovery. Um, obviously, you know bots are something you're never going to be able to really truly combat you're going to you know try to push it in waves to ban them every other couple months to catch on to them but it's really hard to you know combat the algorithm of bots because you know they're always going to be some type of new code coming up right some some type of new uh program or software whatever that they you know the bots do um that is going to counteract whatever blizz's team is working on you know their defense right so i wonder if they're doing this because they are noticing that on sod that this is starting to happen more recently because since we are getting the end game and like flask and a lot of consumables in general especially in the auction house are going to start skyrocketing in price that that you know a lot of bot accounts um, would start taking massive advantages of this especially when it comes to any in-game item within you know season of discovery within wow in general so i wonder if this is what they're you know going for i'm a little curious about it i want to know your guys thoughts in the comments below you think this is maybe a way to combat the bots that are possibly coming to sod um it's kind of interesting that they're doing this i don't i don't i can't i'm not gonna hate them on this part you know obviously if you could stop as many bots as you can the more power to you so to continue the video however um there's also uh, an updated thing on uh wowhead as well to show you where you can do the epic quest line all the rewards you can get from the quest line itself so we'll make sure to put that in the description below for you guys to check out you know have you up to date so you can follow this i know some of you guys probably using zonkify as well or other websites um but this will be put in the description for you to help you guys out here as well another thing is is that in warsong gulch if it wasn't bad enough uh and there wasn't people camping on top of the roost with the flag for three hours on end obviously i have never i'm never going back to warsong gulch again just me i live in a rathy basin now um people are using the hide and seek you know the little items that you get to basically de like hide away the flag where it almost looks like it's despawned they're hiding the flag and no one can see it, it doesn't show so that is kind of insane that people are doing this now it's a bit of a joke obviously i think it's something that will get fixed up it, it is a, a pretty much a, a funny little side effect overall but um if it isn't bad enough that you can't even find the flag now people are finding a way to remove the flag so that is kind of funny i think that's you know a little little, little meme overall i'm sure blizzard will fix that also if you don't know the emerald chips use are basically user currencies for the emerald wardens i was a little confused when i was getting these chips as well i was like wait where the hell do i hand these in they're basically a currency for rewarding for completing a nightmare incursion in for alice and, and the hinterlands with each quest with the dream award and one emerald chip prices vary from 50 to 75 uh per the chip item itself um 
and then that's basically it for that. However, they haven't found out the use of the Nightmare Renaissance Crystal, so that's still a mystery that they're going forward and trying to figure out. Uh, overall, also, Exalted Rewards on Waylaid Supplies, 18-slot bag, Binding and Account Helms. So we have some nice Binding and Account Helms that they have offered to the supply list. Obviously, they're not the best. They're mediocre, if anything. However, um, it seems really interesting of uh, the items that they're continuing to add more and more as we go through the phases. I do hope there's a little bit more of um, you know mix-up of actual cooler items to get once you hit you know Exalted. If they decide, you know even within next phase, to add more even you know, maybe potential pre best items that maybe a player can go after if they have it exalted within the waylaid supplies. I think that would be pretty nice overall. And this one seems pretty interesting too. A trinket, supply uh, expediter. Uh, you sometimes find additional waylaid surprise from enemies. So it gives you more incentive. You know, go out in the open world or wherever you're killing in dungeons and you're finding more waylaid supplies. And I think that's pretty dope. It might be also a good way of making gold overall. If the auction house, obviously, if you could afford the item or make them yourself or get the items, right? Because obviously we know the auction house is completely scuffed right now. Um, but the 18 slot bag, that's really nice. Of course, everybody's going to want an 18 slot bag. That's pretty huge overall. And then also, finally, uh, with the world buff drop uh, dropping from uh, Yojamba Isle uh, to the, you know, the west of uh, the camps by Stranglethorn up in the north, uh, and dropping in Booty Bay for those Xanolari buffs, they have a list here of showing you all the epic rings that you're able to get within Sunken Temple itself as well. So... Overall, that is a lot to stuff that we talked about today. I'm over here stuttering. My mom just gave me food real quick. I had to cut the VOD for a quick second because I'm ready to eat. I'm starving. I ate all day. However, much love to you, amigos. I hope you enjoyed the video, um, and I really you know, am enjoying Season of Discovery overall. Is there problems? Yes, there's always going to be problems, but that's why I'm here to talk with you and go over them and always give you the coverage and the news as much as I can. So much love to you. We'll have this video out by today, I'm sure of it, and uh, we'll go from there. However, as always, lock it in, settle down, and hydration nation. If you're hydrated, you're stimulated, all right? All right? So rock rock with that one for now. You're pissing me off. I saw somebody give me an eye and a look right there. I'll slap the shit out. Much love, though. I'll kiss you. I'll see you on the next one. Keep on keeping on. Peace. That was a good video, right? Well, not that bad. Almost jumped you right there. I'll see you.